This lesson incorporates a little more in terms of the operations we need to perform. So that structure that we built in the last lesson, we're going to continue to use that in this lesson. In this lesson, we have multiple steps. We have more than one operation. And if you have more than one op operation in an equation, how do you know which one to undo first? Hopefully, you are going to talk about uh, doing the order of operations backwards. So you see I wrote PEMDAS, which, right, which is our acronym for the order of operations, and we're going to go backwards. So if we have addition and subtraction, we're actually going to do that, undo that first before we inverse any multiplication or division, which is the opposite of how you would normally do your order of operations. So we're following the order of operations, but we're going backwards. All right, let's check out example one. The height of a tree after x years is 1.5x plus 15. After how many years is the tree 24 feet tall? So here's our expression that represents the tree, and here's our actual number that represents the tree. So we're going to take those two things and write an equation. 1.5x plus 15 equals 24. So now the structure that we built last lesson is to drop a line down the equal sign. And now you actually have to determine what operations, plural, you have, right? I have addition and I have multiplication. So if you think about our order of operations, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the addition first. And then we'll get rid of the multiplication because we're going backwards. So first thing I'll do is minus 15. I'm going to line it up under the 15 so it easily cancels. And then I bring down what's left. 1.5x equals and 24 minus 15 is 9. So you still have to perform an inverse because the variable is not alone. The goal of solving an equation to get the variable by itself. So my next inverse uh, or my next operation is multiplication, so the inverse is division, and I'm going to use the advanced fraction bar that we've talked about instead of the elementary school division symbol. Um, so I've got to get my calculator out. 9 divided by 1.5 is 6. So especially because I had multiple operations, it's very important that I check. It doesn't say to check, but you'll know you have it right when you check. So I'm going to rewrite the equation, 1.5. Instead of x, I'm going to put a 6, and I'm going to use the parentheses instead of the x symbol, because then it looks like I still have a variable. Plus 15 equals 24. 1.5 times 6 is 9. And when I do this addition, 9 plus 15, I get 24, so I know I did it right. And again, I didn't have to check, but I wanted to get it right, so I wanted to confirm that I did it correctly. If you look at example 2, the question, before we get to the uh, fill in the blanks, you have uh, 8x and 6x, and those are considered like terms um, because like terms have the same variable and exponent. And I say exponent because that's technically the definition of like terms, but we're not really going to deal with uh, exponents with our variables until we get really to chapter 10, I believe, so not for a while. Um, but you can combine them, and you can easily combine like terms when they are on the same side of the equation. And it's very important that you emphasize, so you might want to highlight the fact that they have to be on the same side. When they're on different sides, it's a little bit more complex. We're actually, we're actually going to look at those when we get to our next lesson, 1.3, where the variables will be on different sides. But right now, they're all on the same side, and so you can easily just combine them. You have eight x's, so visualize the letter X and you have eight letter X's and then you take away six of them, how many letter X's would you have? You'd have two X and that's really just it. You combine your terms just like you would regular numbers. So the first thing I'll do is drop my line down the equal sign um, and I'm going to combine the terms before I do any inverses because it will make the equation look a little less complicated. So 8X minus 6X is 2X and then bring everything else down. 
Now I'm ready to do some inversing. So what operations do I have? I have subtraction and I have multiplication. So I'm going to get rid of the subtraction first by doing addition. Right, because remember we're doing PEMDAS. But we're going backwards, so I'm going to get rid of subtraction before multiplication. So these cancel out. I just have 2x, and negative 35 plus 25 is negative 10. So I have multiplication. The inverse of that is division, so I'll divide both sides by 2 so that the variable is by itself. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. I would encourage you to plug negative 5 in and make sure that it works. If it doesn't work, make an annotation on your paper and ask me when you come to class. So now we've got one that's even more complex than the last one, and it is more complex because we have the distributive property, and the distributive property is something you have when you have parentheses in, uh, in an expression. So if you don't know anything about the distributive property, make a note and ask about it in class. Um, but I'm going to go on like you remember the distributive property is when you take the number that's outside the parentheses and you multiply it by everything that's inside. So I would do 2 times 1 and then 2 times 5x. So that's just a quick little reminder about how the distributive property works. So 2 times 1 is 2 minus 2 times 5x. Well, 2 times 5 is 10 and then the x just carries on, it just hangs out with it, and I'll bring down the plus 4 equals negative 8. Now, I have like terms. They don't, they're not variable terms, but they're number terms. 2 and 4 are both numbers, and since they're on the same side, you can combine them. So I'm going to choose to combine them before I move on to any inverses. So 2 plus 4 is 6, so 6 minus 10x equals negative 8. All right, now, we have a little bit more of a complex equation because our variable actually got switched. In the previous example, our variable came first and our number came second. Here, the variable comes second. So it's a little bit trickier. We're going to do a little bit more of these in class, but let me kind of walk you through this one. The sign goes with the number that's next to it. So this 6, since it has no symbol in front of it, is considered a positive 6. This 10, since it has a minus sign in front of it, is considered a negative 10. So this is positive 6, and this is negative 10 next to an x. So positive 6 is what we're going to get rid of first because this is multiplication, and multiplication gets rid of you do the inverse later on in the process. So I'm going to drop a line, and the first thing that I'm going to do is minus 6 from both sides. I want to just get the number away. Leave the variable term till the very end, get rid of the 6. And the reason that I'm minusing is because this is positive. If you want to put a little plus sign, right, when there's no, when there's no symbol in front, it's positive. It's not subtraction because the subtraction actually belongs with the 10. So now I bring down what I have left, which is negative 10x. Don't forget to bring the 10 down as negative. And then this is negative 8 minus 6 is negative 14. Now again, I don't have subtraction. This is not subtraction. This is a multiplication because it's a number. The number just happens to be negative 10. It's a number next to a variable. So the inverse of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 10. Those cancel, and you just have x equals, and then you get 1.4 as your answer. So since this had a lock going on, and it ended up with a decimal answer, everyone freaks out, they think it's wrong, let's check it. So the way that you check is you rewrite the equation, but wherever you see an x, you put 1.4. So two parentheses, 1 minus 5 times 1.4 plus 4 equals negative 8. Now, since I'm not doing any inverses, I'm just going to do regular order of operations. Inverses uh, are only uh, used when you're solving the equation for the variable. When you have the variable, you just do it like you did it, you know, back in fifth and sixth grade. So I have to do parentheses first. Um, so 
this is 1 minus uh, 5 times 1.4 is 7. And then I bring everything else down. All right, keep going. This gives me negative 6. Bring everything else down. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And negative 12 plus 4. When the signs are different, you subtract and take the sign of the larger number. So 12 minus 4 is 8, and the 12 was bigger. All right, so like I said, we're going to do more of these because I know they had a lot of little pieces where you could make a mistake. So we'll do more of these in class. But let's move on to the last example, number four. We have to use the table to find the number of miles you need to run on Friday so that the mean, mean, remember, means average, the mean number of miles run per day is 1.5. So how do you find an average? Well, if you forgot, I'll tell you, it's you take the total and you divide by the number of items, which in this case will be 5, and then that equals the average. So let's plug in what we know. Well, what I have so far, if I add these all up, I'd get 3.5. So my total would be 3.5 plus x. So that's going to go in for my total. Because whatever x is, I would add that to 3.5, and I'm getting 3.5 by adding all these numbers up. 3.5 plus x. Well, since there are five days, I would divide that by five, and they tell me that the average that I should want is 1.5. So what I'd like you to do is any strategy you want to solve, please pause the video and try and solve for x. And when you think you have it, play and I'll talk about it. All right, you might have used a different procedure to solve, but that's totally fine with me as long as you ended up with four miles. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.